His Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister of Cambodia, the Honorable Minister of Health, the Honorable State Minister of Health, the Honorable Health Advisor to the Prime Minister, the Senior Secretary of Health, His Excellency, the U.S. Ambassador to Bangladesh, Mission Director, USAID Bangladesh, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends, Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Today is a very special day for me. 17 years ago, on May 3rd, I became a mother. I have been working in public health for the last 20 years. So during my pregnancy, I knew what healthy pregnancy meant. I read all the books. Every month followed what to expect. I went to all my antenatal care visits. I was planning to take maternity leave from 36 weeks onwards. Around the 31st week, a colleague of mine had come to the office, saw me, and made a remark casually, made a remark casually said, Kanta, are you still working? Why don't you just, you know, rest a bit? When she said that, I thought, is that what I should be doing? My next antenatal visit was in the next three days. Should I wait? I just decided to go and have a visit and check with my doctor because uh, the medical unit was very close by. When I went there and they measured my blood pressure, it was 200 over 120. I was asked whether I had blurry vision, whether I had headaches, whether I felt dizzy, and I had none of those symptoms. My platelet count was below the normal level and it was going down fast. I had symptoms of preeclampsia. I was referred to a facility, I was monitored for 24 hours, and within 36 hours, I needed surgical intervention to save my life and my baby's life. What saved me was quick action to seek care, proper referral, and ending up in a facility that had the appropriate setting to look after me and my preterm baby, and a bit of luck. Ensuring safe delivery needs a lot of complex and a whole range of interventions from raising awareness among mothers and their family about safe pregnancy, about recognizing complications of pregnancy, to access to facilities that can manage complications. That's not an easy task. But the countries of the Asia region, you have done it. I congratulate the Asia region for making remarkable progress in improving maternal health. The countries that are here today, we are all in different stage of the path that will lead to our goal of improving maternal health. That's because our settings are different, our constraints are different. But there's one element that puts us all together, our passion, our commitment, and our labor to ensure that every mother and her baby count. In this conference, a number of countries will be presenting their successes and sharing their experiences with us. Today, I stand here with immense pride to share the Bangladesh story, the, its impressive progress on saving mothers' lives. Bangladesh's Millennium Development Goal is to reduce maternal mortality from around 600, 574 to be precise, to 143 per 100,000 live births by 2015. 
Bangladesh has been a country that has embraced strong monitoring and evaluation in measuring the progresses it's making. So, to look at how our interventions are working out, we conducted a large-scale survey in 2001 comprising of 100,000 households to measure maternal mortality at that time. We also gathered information on use of maternal health care. We conducted another large-scale survey of 175,000 households in 2010 to measure or to catch whether maternal mortality has declined. I'm just going to say a little bit about the measurement of maternal mortality because different countries use different methodology. What we use is we estimated the maternal mortality ratio for the three years before the survey. Information was collected on all deaths in the households in the three years before the survey. For deaths of women under 50 years old, we asked questions whether the death occurred during pregnancy, delivery, or two months after delivery. Verbal autopsy was conducted on all deaths of women in the reproductive ages to determine causes of death. Two to three physicians reviewed these cases and determined which were maternal deaths. Our estimates in 2001 showed that maternal mortality in Bangladesh was 322 for the period 20, 2007 to 2009, the midpoint of that period. And in 2010, the maternal mortality ratio had declined to 194, about 40% reduction. What I'm going to do today is try to explain why in Bangladesh or the factors that has contributed to this maternal mortality decline. I'm going to first look at the period in the 1990s and see what are some of the major contributors to this decline. And then I'll look at the period, the current decade, the last decade. Why am I looking at it separately? Because some of the factors that affected the decline in the 1990s are a bit different to the factors that affected the decline in the first decade of this 21st century. Of course, there were a lot of factors that played a role in the entire time, and, 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 and those factors contributed to the decline throughout the entire period. But I would like to highlight some of the factors that played prominent roles in these two periods. Another reason of looking at it in two phases is the source of data that I'll be using to discuss it. In the 1990s, I'll be making reference to a lot of the results that comes from MATLAB, where a surveillance has been on ongoing for the last 40 years and has very rigorous sets of data to look at some of these uh, changes that has happened. Some of the changes that has happened in MATLAB can be inferred for the general population. And for the decline during 2001 and 10, I'll be drawing my data source mainly from the two large surveys that we have conducted. Before I look at those factors, I would like to mention the contextual factors that were so important to contributing to the maternal mortality decline throughout the entire period from the 1990s to current period, 2011 or 10. First, the government of Bangladesh's sustained and consistent commitment. Without that, we could not have come this far. There was excellent collaboration among the government, NGOs, and development partners to improve maternal health. We, locked, we worked in harmony and we worked to achieve the same goal. Before 1990, Bangladesh actually started with a basic MCH service delivery structure that was in place from the late 70s, so we didn't start new. And what were these basic structures? We had hospitals at district and top district levels. We had satellite clinics at union level providing ANC and PNC, antenatal care and postnatal care. We had satellite clinics at the community level providing 
antenatal care and postnatal care, and down at the field level, at the household and community level, we had field workers who were involved in community mobilization and behavior change and communication messages. We also had intensive family planning program following the same structure as we discussed about the maternal and child health structure, down from clinic level to the field level. Field workers visited door to door to provide family planning services. In addition to that, we had a large private sector social marketing of contraceptives through more than 150,000 uh, private outlets. Another aspect that has to be mentioned is GOB program, the government programs offered menstrual regulation services as an alternate to unsafe abortion. During the 1990s, most of the births were happening in the home and were conducted through untrained attendants. So the government trained 42,000 traditional birth attendants beginning 1980 with the hope that this training will reduce many of the harmful practices and also would, they would be able to recognize complications and make proper referral. There were other broader social development happening. Investment in female education during the 1990s with scholarship program has made a huge impact in improving the educational level of girls. Microcredit program in the 19 has contributed significantly in empowering women. And there has been development in communications, a lot of improvement on roadways beginning from 1980. And in the 21st century, the emergence of mobile phones have added a new dimension to communications. We will first look at the 1990s, the decline in maternal mortality in Bangladesh. I will not discuss all the factors, but some of them. During the 1990s, facilities, there was a focus to upgrade facilities to provide comprehensive emergency obstetric care. And the focus was at the facilities at the district level. Only three sub-district level facilities were upgraded during that time. Now we are going to look at skilled birth attendance throughout that period. Overall, there was not much of an increase over this range of eight years. 10% to 12% of of deliveries were attended by skilled bed attendants throughout this period. But there was some improvement in facility delivery, increasing from 4% in the beginning of the 1990s to about 9% to the late 1990s. These are percent of births three years before the survey. Upgrading of facilities was not meant to be at that time encouraging people to come and deliver at facilities. The entire purpose of upgradation was that when women have complications that they are referred to the facilities. At this time, looking at the data, there was a belief that women prefer to give birth at home due to many cultural, social, economic barriers. In the 1990s, there has been a significant decline in infections related to childbirth. This we see from MATLAB, and we think we can generalize for the national program. What led to this? If you look at tetanoid toxoid immunization, there has been a huge increase from 26% of the mothers received at least one TT during pregnancies, and that increased to 85% in 2001. But during this period, in 1989, only 9% of mothers were receiving at least one antenatal care visit. 
and about 40% in 2001. But why this success? Because tetanus toxide immunization program was tied with the child vaccination program. And the success of the child vaccination program also carried along the success in immunizing women during pregnancy. We also see that use of antibiotic during that be, uh, period became widespread. They are available in Bangladesh without prescriptions, and we find that many traditional doctors have been prescribing antibiotics for women. Another factor, the training of traditional birth attendants had at least reduced some harmful practices that reduce infections. Decline in unsafe abortions also led to decline in maternal mortality. Contraceptive use increased from 32% to 54% during this period. This reduced unintended pregnancy and hence unsafe abortion. Access to government of Bangladesh's menstrual regulation pro uh, program also provided alternate to unsafe abortion. And this reduced deaths related to abortion quite significantly. We don't have data from the national, uh, nationally, but this is what we see has happened in Matlab, and we believe we can draw the same conclusion for the entire country. Fertility declined by 26%, from 4.3 to 3.2 births per woman. The decline in fertility has a huge impact in reducing maternal deaths and some impact in reducing maternal mortality ratio. How does that happen? When we looked at the fertility decline, we see that it declined much more for women who are in the older age group. And the maternal mortality risk is five to six times higher for women who are above age 35 compared to those who are below age 30. Now, I will look at the decline that happened between 2001 and 2010. The data comes from the two national surveys that we have done in 2001 and 2010. Many of you know that we had an impressive decline of 40% in nine years. When we look at the causes of death in 2010, we see eclampsia and hemorrhage account for over half of the deaths. Obstructed or prolonged labor accounts for 7%. Abortion is very small, 1%. We believe it might be an underestimate because it's not very easy to collect data on abortion-related deaths at the national level. If you look at the cost-specific maternal mortality ratios and compare it with the 2001 figures, we see there has been a decline in all cost-specific maternal mortality ratios. Hemorrhage declined by 35%, eclampsia deaths declined by 50%, obstructed labor by 26%, abortion by 85%. I will not go into why undetermined uh, uh, category goes down so low. It's because of the methodology. And tomorrow we have a satellite session so where we will be discussing a lot of these and maybe we can go into more details. Let's now look at some of the major interventions that had happened in the period 2001 and 2010, and then we will discuss some of the results. 133 Upazala Health Complexes, that is at the sub-district, what happens? At the sub-district level, were upgraded to provide comprehensive emergency obstetric care. The belief that women will not go out of the house also led to training of 6,000 community skilled birth attendants starting, the training started in 2003. We had found that use of maternal health services, there's huge inequity in use of all kinds of maternal health services. And to address that issue, demand side finance program were introduced 
in phases. Two pilots in two piscillas in 2006, and when we were doing the 2010 maternal mortality survey, uh, the uh, DSF program covered about 32 puzzlers, and now it has covered about 52 puzzlers. And there was some strengthening of health systems for maternal and newborn health in selected districts that started in phases from the year 2007. Now, what accounts for the maternal mortality decline during 2001 and 10? The reasons can be categorized as medical, socioeconomic, and demographic. Skilled attendance at delivery. Between 2001 and 2010, this had doubled, and most of the increase has happened at the facilities. Facility deliveries increased from 9 to 23 percent. Now let us look at, over a longer period of time, how skilled birth attendance at delivery has changed. In the first eight years, change has been 0.3% per year. From 2001, we see quite significant increases up to the 2011 DHS. Between 2010 and 2011, skilled birth attendance increased by 5%. And all of it is really due to increase in facility births. So we feel there's a momentum that has taken place and the same kind of trend we have also seen in MATLAB. This is looking at skilled birth attendance by various districts. The red area shows where skilled birth attendance at delivery is less than 20%. The green are where it's 40% or over, and the orange and yellow are in between. This lets us focus where our intervention should be more strong. In 2001, we had similar maps developed, and these data were used to select districts where our programs could be intensified. Where are these facility births occurring? In 2001, the public sector was the most dominant source. In 2010, we see the private sector has, has increased its share quite a bit. There has also been, also been increased in the public sector. If I look at the, at the 2011 figures, private sector is now 15% and the public sector has increased to 12%, and that's from the Bangladesh Demographic and Health Survey 2011. C-sections was 2.6% in 2001 of the deliveries were, had C-sections, and that increased to 12.2%. And in the 2011 DHS, we find, we find that it's increased to 17.2%. While this seems okay, the worrying feature is if you look at C-section rates by socioeconomic groups or among the higher education group, we find that among the highest education group of women who have had some uh, secondary education, it has risen to 40%. 40% of the deliveries are happening through C-sections. And among the most, the, twin, the top quintile, it is about 32%. Are these all C-sections needed? Is there a provider bias or is there a client bias towards these C-sections? Looking at the proportion of C-sections that happens by type of facilities, overall, half of the facility deliveries are done by uh, are C-sections in the private sector Seven out of 10 of the births that occur are through C-sections. We also collected information on care seeking. We asked women if they had certain complications and we named what the complications were, the key complications, whether they sought care and where did they go to seek care. And now I'll be presenting those findings. We are comparing the 2010 and the 2001 Bangladesh Maternal Mortality Survey data. We find that 
there has been a 28% increase in care seeking. If you look at women who sought care from a facility, we find that it increased from 16 to 29% in 2010. So from this data, it looks like people are using the facilities to have safe delivery and also going to facilities to get treated for complications. So what accounts for the increased use of the maternal health, use of the maternal health services in this period? We have already talked about there have some, we think the access to health services had increased. We have seen before that we have upgraded additional facilities. We had trained community birth attendants, although we don't see much of a change there in, in, in using community birth attendants, but it is, my personal belief is it's because the way the program has been implemented. We are not going to go into that today. So overall, service availability has increased. And we have also seen growth of private sector facilities offering maternal health services. This shows private facilities before 2001. This shows the growth of private facilities, the blue and the reds, that, that are there after 2001. So there has been a lot of private facilities now providing maternal health services. Not all of these facilities are providing comprehensive emergency obstetric care, but they are providing some sort of maternal health services. And I think we can understand why we also see that facility births in the private sector has also increased quite a bit. Availability of mobile phones improved communication. Percent of households owning, mov owning mobile phones increased from 3% to 63% between 2001 and 2010. In the 2010 survey, we conducted some qualitative studies and we looked at cases that were near misses. From there, we found out of 10 near miss cases, four of them mentioned the use of mobile phone to seek some kind of services. They collected phone numbers of service providers, so in case at night they were needed, they could be called, and they did call. They used mobile phone to gather funds for, uh, for going to facilities and for treatment. They used mobile phones to uh, get to know from relatives what was their blood type, so when they needed blood. And they used the mobile phone also to wake up pharmacists at night to buy medications. So mobile phone has added really a new dimension to improve communications. We also know there has been improvement in railways and now access to facilities are much more easier than it was two decades ago. Mother's education level has increased. If you compare from 1993 to 2001, women with at least some secondary education has increased from 15 to 45%. And we know that educated mothers are more likely to seek care of any sort. They are more aware, their awareness is better, they are more empowered to make decisions. Again, fertility decline, it declined from 3.2 to 2.5 births per woman, a 22% decline between the period 2001 and 10. The same kind of impact as we have discussed before. And this led to decline in maternal deaths much more than its impact on maternal mortality ratio. I bring in fertility decline because we will see right now what it, it, its impact has been in reducing the number of deaths. In 2001, with a maternal mortality ratio of 322 per 100,000 live births, we can calculate how many maternal deaths we had. It's 12,000. 
Between 2001 and 10, the number of women in reproductive age increased by 29%. If our, total if our total fertility rate and maternal mortality rate remained at the 2001 level, that is, there's no change in maternal mortality ratio or total fertility ratio, then there would be 15,800 maternal deaths in 2001 due to the increase in the women in the reproductive age group. But we now see our calculation is that we have 7,300 maternal deaths. 25% reduction in the, uh, our maternal deaths averted due to decline in fertility, 4% due to fertility pattern change, and 24% due to the maternal mortality ratio decline. The last 100 meters. As with everybody else, we do have some challenges. And where to focus on in the future? I'm just going to mention only a few points. We see that facility births, going to facility for delivery has taken a momentum. We need to ensure that women get proper care and that there are enough facilities to meet the demand. So the focus on ensuring provision of good quality and reliable basic emergency obstetric care at the sub-district level. And also we believe for hard to reach areas, for geographic areas at there where access is a huge problem, we also need to provide good quality basic EMOC services at strategically located union or community level. And all these facilities must have effective referral backup systems. Service quality is a concern. We are plagued with staffing problem, staff attendance, logistics, and also skills. And we definitely, definitely need to improve that. We have seen that postpartum hemorrhage and eclampsia accounts for half of the maternal deaths. We need to prevent these deaths at the household level because 68% of the deliveries are still occurring in the home. We need to ensure proper referral and how to manage these cases at the facilities. And we hope to learn a lot from these conferences of the best practices and how we can impl implement some of these practices in our country. The private sector is responding to the demand, but is it too expensive for the more uh, people who don't have much resources? When we looked at the data of the cost of delivery, it is twice as high in a private facility than in a government facility. And also what is worrisome is the rates, high rates of C-sections in the private facilities, some kind of regulatory um, or regulation, we need to think about it. From our qualitative work, we have also seen that care seekers are spending a lot of time uh, inefficiently and with ineffective home uh, treatments. They call one traditional birth attendant, two traditional birth attendant, then another tr traditional doctor before they seek care to appropriate place and that needs to be reduced. For that, we need to raise awareness at the household level, not of the mother only, her husband and the others who make decisions for her at home. What does the future look like? Education level will continue to rise. Two thirds of older teenage girls now have some secondary schooling and that's good news. We hope the education the more educated the mothers are, this will lead to better results and will contribute to improving maternal health a lot. Family planning services must be supported and strengthened to bring down high-risk births. The 2011 DHS shows that fertility has fallen further to 2.3 births. The government of Bangladesh's aim is to reach two births per woman by 2016 and we need a strong family planning program for that. 
In conclusion, I would like to congratulate all of you, the policymakers, the program managers, the health service providers, the researchers, the media, the advocates, for all the work you have done to improve maternal health in this country. We have talked about a lot of factors. No matter how many factors you bring in, there's always an unexplainable factor, something that we haven't explained. And I think it is the will of the people of Bangladesh for a better life that make things work in Bangladesh. The momentum for further, further progress is in place, and let's work together to meet our maternal health and child health goals. Before I conclude, I borrowed some pictures uh, from a um, um, documentary, a BBC documentary that has been telecasted. It shows two cases. A mother here, this will be her second birth, who has decided to deliver in a facility. She was checked, I just missed it, then now she's lying down, seems calm, ready to deliver her baby. Baby is born, has been wrapped. Before that, the baby was put on mother's breast. The baby was weighed. Another case where the mother decided to deliver at home to a traditional birth attendant. In the same area, in Matlab, she delivered the uh, baby in a squatting position. Now the effort to get the placenta out, hair has been put in her mouth so that she, for retching. Then uh, chilies, burnt chilies, so that it would make her cough and put pressure for the placenta to come out. And then the traditional birth attending is using her feet to pressure her stomach so that the placenta would come out. And then putting her hand in her mouth while the other woman presses her tummy. While these are going on, the, the baby is underneath the mother. Here, after the placenta has come out, Mucus from the umbilical cord is being put on the baby's mouth to prevent the belief infection. Its limbs are being stretched. Then the baby is taken out up in the open air for bathing. And then she dips her finger on honey and gives it to the baby and then feeds uh, uh, milk with a spoon and decides that the baby should not be given breast milk until three days. In both cases, the mother and baby survived. I went through those pictures to just remind us that improving maternal health is not only about preventing deaths. Every woman has the right to have an enjoyable, rewarding, and affordable experience in giving birth. Let's all work towards that goal. Thank you.